Yo, what's up guys? My name is Violent Gamer. This is Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Uh, it's a Game Boy Advance game. I'm running this on the Wii U Virtual Console. And I'm just gonna start it right away in 3, 2, 1, go! Alrighty, so... This is Mario vs. Donkey Kong. It's a puzzle platformer game. It's very movement based. So there's a lot of cool movement tech. Um, you'll see a lot of movement that's similar to Donkey Kong 94 for the original Game Boy. Um, and of course, Mario 64 got inspiration from DK94 with its movement, such as the triple jump and the backflip and whatnot. So there's a lot of similarities. So the goal with these levels, um, they're, each level is split into two different parts. There's the A part and B part. Uh, for the A levels, you um, you have to find a key and you have to bring the key to the keyhole. There are also switches and enemies spread out throughout the whole uh, level. Yikes. Alright. So, I'm going to be donating $1 per death. Um, it looked like I just walked into that oil canister. Uh, but I, what I was trying to do was jump through it. You can actually pass through objects if you are moving upwards, if you're jumping upwards. Just like that. I'm gonna do it again there. It's a pretty difficult jump. Um, it's very, very easy to die there. So that's one dollar. And the second half of the level requires you to find a mini Mario and to set it free. Um, so for basic, basic movements you have triple jumps, you have backflips. Um, they're called side flips actually. I like to call them backflips though. Um, you can also jump while you're climbing the ladder, which saves a bit of time. It's pretty nice. So there are six worlds and there are six levels in each world. And um, there's also a seventh level, which is a mini Mario Escort level. And then the eighth level is the DK fight. And there are seven DK fights in this game. And they're all they all have their own little gimmicks, which is pretty cool. And all of the strats are pretty neat. So, doing a pretty optimal tr triple jump right there. Um, there, there. There's this very, very difficult backflip set of backflips coming up. I'm also going to be jumping here under the ceiling to gain speed. And those are the backflips. So, uh, you saw me, probably saw me duck before I did the backflip. Basically, when you crouch, when you duck, and... Um, when, when you duck, you can turn uh, to a, the opposite direction faster instead of uh, walking to the opposite direction, if that makes sense. So instead of walking to the right and walking to the left, you can just duck and you'll... Uh, when you press the left, you'll automatically be facing left. You don't have to wait for a cooldown or anything. Uh, also, when you duck and unduck under a low ceiling like that, you gain a pixel of distance every time. Which helps speed that up a bit. This game has a, a lot of different quirks like that. Alright, there's also this triple jump right here. Now I pass through that shy guy a little bit. That strat saves about a second uh, compared to uh, the safe strat. There's gonna be some more triple jumps here. World 1 is pretty basic, honestly, but um, the further you get into the run, the uh, harder it gets. And World 6 is definitely the hardest world. So this is the final level. This, this is the brick level. Gonna start off by doing a triple jump right away. Backflipping straight off the yellow switch. Doing another backflip. And that sets me up to make this break cycle. As I casually do some yumps. 
and I'm jumping over these uh, bricks to uh, save a little bit more time. But it's very easy to get hit. Uh, here you can just hold left and you'll survive all of the bricks. <laughs> it's very funny. And that triple jump uh, is a lot harder than it looks. You have to control how far you do the third jump. If you jump too far to the right, you'll actually fall and you'll take fall damage. There's actually fall damage in this game. Um, and you get stunned for a bit. You can actually die if you if you um, fall from a greater distance, from a greater height, my bad. So this is the first X score mission. I used a little bit of AI manipulation tech. Basically, um, whenever you're jumping, the mini Marios continue in the direction that they've been running, so they don't follow you how they're supposed to. And I uh, manipulated, I, I used that to my advantage. So when I was doing the triple jump, uh, the mini Mario continued to walk to the right instead of following me. Saves a bit of time. And you only need one mini Mario. Basically each mini Mario you collect determines... Um, it basically adds a hit that you can take in the DK fight. So I can only take one hit. And uh, if I take one hit, I will instantly die. There are some instances where you want to take more than one to play it safe, um, but we're not going to do that until the final, uh, the sixth DK fight. So here I'm doing a soft reset by holding A, B, start and select, and it uh, skips a whole intro sequence to the next world, which is pretty nice. Going to do another ducking backflip right there to save some frames. It's important to land on that switch from the rope, saves like half a second. And you don't want to walk off of the green platform, you want to jump off of it instead because uh, when you walk off of platforms, uh, Mario's lice kind of gets stuck on them a little bit. You lose like half a second. Uh, you can also pass through objects while you're on a ladder and you can jump through the objects, which is really nice. So World 2 is the jungle world, obviously, it introduces rope climbing and um, rhino enemies. This is a very tight cycle I'm making here. Um, but if anyone is interested in running this game, we, def we definitely need more runners. Uh, this game is available on emulator, you can get it on Game Boy, you can use Game Boy Player. Um, it's also on 3DS the 3DS Virtual Console, or you can get it on the Wii U Virtual Console, which is what I run on. This game is actually, it actually is on the 3DS Virtual Console. So, by the way, if anyone in the chat has questions, feel free to ask and I can answer any questions you guys have. Alrighty, so there's another, there's a very, very tight cycle here that I'm going to make with the triple jump. That requires very precise timing. If you, if you get that jump too early or too late, you can either die if you're too early by hitting the spikes, or if you're too late, you won't uh, make it high enough up to the mini Mario. You'll lose like two or three seconds. What is the meaning of life? Mm, obviously speedrunning this game, right? <laughs> um, there I went for a frame-perfect backflip, which can save you five seconds. Fortunately, I didn't get it because it's frame-perfect. All right. So, fun fact, I actually found a <laughs> 13 second time save in this game, uh, like 20 minutes before 
starting this run. Can you guys believe that? <laughs> this game is super optimized, but we're still finding new strats, which is, which is amazing. Uh, there I made a very, very difficult elevator cycle by getting the key and um, making it back to the platform. <laughs> Do I have a favorite level in this game? It's probably the final Donkey Kong fight. You guys will see why. Uh, what was first, the chicken or the egg? Definitely neither. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, why did I want to speedrun this game? Well, this is the first Game Boy game that I played in my childhood. Alright, another... You can make it over that gap with a triple jump. It's very important to land on that rhino as soon as you can. And that jump is... That jump on the rhino is uh, way harder than it looks because you can easily grab the rope right there and mess up the strat. Also, this strat is very precise. Alright, we did it. We did it, boys. That's a two-second time save compared to the slower strat. Um, <laughs> Alright, so this is the second Mini Mario level. We're gonna do a bit more manipulation. Uh, just pay attention to the top and the bottom. You guys will see what'll happen. I'm gonna collect two letters at the same time. Just like that. It's very, very precise movement. Alright, so this second DK fight is probably the hardest casually, but in the speedrun, he becomes a joke. And you can beat him in like f 10 seconds. Or five seconds, actually. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the fight. <laughs> that's literally the fight. <laughs> Alright, so world three is the lava world. So, Lava World introduces a cool mechanic called Waiting for Cycles. Isn't that so cool, guys? I love Waiting for Cycles, man. It's so much fun. Very good game design. <laughs> Alright. Um, guess what we're doing in the second half? We are... Kinda of waiting for cycles. I'm gonna do a pretty cool double jump here, and then a uh, backflip off of this turtle. Uh, wait, did I just call a pig a turtle? Same thing, right? The pig enemy. They they have a name. I forgot. Those enemies are from Super Mario Bros. 2 from the U.S. version. All right, so I'm gonna do a very quick triple jump here. Drop down here. Land on here. Make it to the top platform. Bam. It's very, very tight. Going to do another instant triple jump here to make this cycle. Going to do another backflip there. Missing that cycle loses you three seconds. If you fail. Going to land on here and backflip off of it. Bam, we're done. There's a lot going on. A lot of movement going on. Alright, so now I'm going to climb a rope. One, two, three, jump here, climb here, do a triple jump on top of this pig enemy. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> Is it called a Genji? Is that what they're called? <laughs> I don't know. Alright, so this jump might look scary right here. You can actually jump on the very edge of that platform. <laughs> and um, skip the fire completely. Whenever the, those fires are bunched up together, they can't actually touch the edge of the platform for some reason. I don't know. This cycle is very, very tight. Shoutouts to Kmor for finding the setup to this, by the way. 
So I'm gonna grab this key, jump. Oh, I might not make it now because I had a dropped input. Yeah. Well, that's two deaths. I had a dropped input there, so I couldn't make it to the platform at time to get the setup working. Hopefully I can do it now. <clears throat> All right, no dropped input this time. Good. So, all you have to do is stand in the middle of that platform, and Mario will automatically unlock the keyhole for you. The important part is you have to be in the very center. So you can jump against walls while on a single rope to gain height quickly, instead of climbing, instead of just climbing the rope, which is nice. Yeah, the, the death animations in this game really give off a Crash Bandicoot kind of vibe. I, I like it. <laughs> um, this level right here is pretty easy. Um, we're still waiting for cycles. But, not too bad. Uh, this next, the, the, the second half of this level has a really, really insane looking jump. I'm gonna jump off of this moving block while it's still in the air. Just like that. And that's it. It's very, very precise timing. I used the music there to time that jump. It's very consistent. Um, so this very strongly utilizes the amazing mechanic of waiting for cycles because you have to wait for the lava to come all the way up then you have to wait for it to come all the way down isn't that amazing game design isn't that awesome look look at this amazing game <laughs> all right then we make our way back up It's like one of the only, um, I guess, boring levels in the run, but the rest are amazing, I, I swear. <clears throat> so we're gonna do a pretty precise set of backflips there. Um, you can easily die from that shy guy I landed on. Is the runner a violinist IRL? I am a violinist. Um, in fact, I make violin covers of video game music. And you can find those covers on my YouTube channel if you guys are interested. I've made uh, violin covers of everything from Super Mario, from Undertale, from Zelda, from Kingdom Hearts, from Final Fantasy, from Crash Bandicoot, from Mario Kart, from Sonic, from Castlevania, from Chrono Trigger, a lot of different games. A lot of different games. If you guys are interested, feel free to uh, check it out, but can I play one of your violin covers for the segue between this game and the next? Sure. Why not? Alright, so this strat was found by me and Kmore. Um, I'm gonna wait. You have to wait for a DK to throw those lava rocks before you throw the barrel. All right, and now you have to set up to the middle here and hit him as fast as you can. And then you have to do a quick backflip up here. And bam, he's dead. <laughs> it's such a swag looking jump and it saves three seconds. It's it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite uh, strats in the whole game. Yes, I am also on Spotify. I'm also on Spotify. I'm on iTunes, Spotify, and everything. If you guys want to follow me on Spotify, <laughs> I hate to be a sellout, but yeah. Don't forget to donate to the charity, guys. That's that's the real reason I'm doing this. Um, definitely a good cause. And if anyone wants to match my deaths, please feel free to do that. <clears throat> you can even uh, 
donate more than I am if you want, like $2 per death. So yeah, this is Ghost World. It's one of the hardest worlds. It's the second hardest world, in my opinion. Um, so it introduces Talking Thwomps. It introduces Thwimps and Shy Guy Ghosts. Basically, um... Uh, the charity is twitch.tv slash gamer underscore. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> that charity thing was a joke. It's a very well set up joke, I think. <clears throat> um, so. Those are... I don't know what you call those things. Uh, basically, when you land on the platform, those things um, start charging at you, and they can crush you into the wall, but they're not really harmful. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this jump is insane. We're gonna jump over that platform, do a sick triple jump, make it back onto the platform after hitting the blue switch, make it back onto this platform, and then uh, throw the key upwards right there, um, then hit the yellow switch, come back to the key by doing a backflip, grab the key, make it onto this platform, make it to the keyhole. It's... there's a lot going on there. <laughs> Did you guys catch that? <laughs> no, I have not done my 13 second time save yet. It's coming up in world 5. Ooh, I almost died right there. I try. So, sometimes my jokes uh, really miss the uh, the mark, you know what I mean? <clears throat> but I need to do something per death, you know? So, oh, that's, that really sinks. Alright, how about this, guys? Oof. Alright, that counts as a death. <laughs> I want to show off the actual strat. Um, for every death, I will gift a sub in the Retro Gaming Live Twitch channel. How about that? Alright, so I didn't explain what was going on there, but um, the enemy in the top right works pretty strangely. Um, what I did at the beginning is I scrolled the screen a little bit to the right um, to get the enemy set up so that he can move towards me right away. I, it's hard to uh, explain, but you want to scroll the screen. So we did a just did a pretty tight. Triple jump underneath a thwomp. It's a very uh, precise setup right there. You can also backflip over the thwomp, but it's very, very dangerous. It's not worth it at all. So these are the Shy Guy Ghosts. Alright, I did that well. I'm going to jump up against the wall here. Instead of climbing the, ro the two ropes, it's a little faster. It's very easy to die there. You can die to the thwimp, you can die by not hitting the switches and getting your input drop. You can lose a, a lot of time. Alright. So, this strat is very hard. That counts as a death. That's four. Four deaths. Alright, second try. There we go. Never mind. <laughs> Five deaths. Six deaths. Okay, this is getting insane. <laughs> Seven deaths. Here we go. 
Alright. How long have I been, have I been speedrunning this game? Since 2017. I wish I started earlier though. So yeah, basically what I'm what I did there is I did a very precise um, backflip and handstand to bring the donut uh, from below using Mario's feet. Um, it's probably the hardest trick in the whole game, but since this is a marathon, I wanted to show it off. So that was seven, um, seven deaths. Every time I restart, it's seven deaths. If anyone wants to match me and uh, gift seven soaps, please feel free to do so. We good now. Um, there's a lot going on here. Basically, I'm manipulating the Mario's in a certain way. Um, I didn't do it properly though, so there's that. <laughs> but yeah, that was the fourth mini Mario stage. Um, this fight is pretty basic. It's the same idea as the first fight, really. You just, have, you just have to wait for DK to hit the switches to uh, turn the Shy Guys um, solid, so you can grab them. If you hit the- if you hit DK too soon, you have to wait longer and the cycles get all messed up. Yeah, that's the fight. Pretty easy. You'll match half? Sweet. <laughs> Alright, doing another soft reset here. World 5 is the mystery world. Because it's so mysterious. It's the mystic forest. Um, I don't know what's so mysterious about it, other than the music, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna play it safe. Okay. <laughs> Could have easily died right there. Uh, you can do a cool wraparound jump there um, by jumping to the right and then immediately holding left. Uh, pretty cool physics right there. Then I'm going to use my upwards momentum here to jump through the fireball. All right, and five two introduces the first pixel perfect jump. There is a bit of lag in this level. You can uh, decrease the lag by collecting the hammer, uh, but unfortunately I didn't do that. So you want to take five steps and line yourself on this pixel right here. And you can just cheese the entire level. Can I get some cheese spam in the chat? <laughs> we definitely need some cheese spam in the chat. All right, um, this level can also be cheesed quite a bit. If anyone has played this as a kid, you probably remember having a really tough time with this, but you can just do that. <laughs> and yeah, that that's the entire level. Can we get some more cheese spam in the chat, please? <laughs> All right. Um, this level introduces bombs, which you have to wait for to explode. So more waiting for cycles. <laughs> I love waiting for cycles, man. But look, I can show off how fast I can uh, press the B button. <laughs> All right. 
Uh, basically, you're blowing stuff up. I, there's not really much I can explain here. You're just blowing stuff up, dude. And, and you're waiting for things to explode. That That's all you're doing. Very exciting level, as you guys can see. <laughs> Thank you guys for the cheese spam, I appreciate it. <laughs> Alright, that is, I promise, that is the last level where you have to wait for cycles like that. <laughs> I promise. So, here you actually have to be really precise by getting all these jumps first try. Um, I jumped on top of that elevator because sometimes it can just pass through you. Uh, so I jumped there to prevent that from happening. Then you make your way down here. It's important to just drop straight off the platforms instead of running off of them to save frames. That lets you make this cycle right here very quickly. Did another jump right there. Another jump right here. All right, and if you jump too soon to that platform there, you'll just, you'll, you'll fall and you'll die because that is a huge uh, distance. And this level I'm gonna jump through cannonballs. I'm climbing the ropes a specific amount of times. Um, so that I make the cycle perfectly. All right, so now we have five dash five, I believe, four. Five, four. I, I can't. I, I can't even count. <laughs> uh, we have this level where you hit a switch, you hit another switch, you take a key and you throw it. There's a lot, a lot going on. You hit another switch. You go bouncy bounce, drop straight down. Oh or not? <laughs> Ooh, I made a really precise cycle right there that I rarely get. Where is that for you guys? <laughs> I'm gonna grab this hammer and instantly let go of it, because I don't need it. Um, every time you kill something with a hammer, it slows the game down. It uh, freezes the game, actually. So it, it completely stops time in the game. You don't want the game to be constantly freezing. So we avoid killing enemies with hammers as much as possible. Alright, so this level looks extremely complicated, but you can just cheese it. Can I get some cheese spam in the chat again? Oh yeah, th this game looks easy, but if you play it yourself, it's definitely, definitely, definitely not easy. <laughs> my, my run, my, my current world record still has more than 50 seconds of time save. But the game is so hard, and we have so few runners that um, it takes a while for us to make progress. This game is extremely punishing. I'm already probably two minutes over my world record pace. Because I've died so much. Maybe even three minutes. All right, so this is where the 13 second time save comes into play. I'm gonna manipulate a mini Mario to be waiting by the toy chest so that he's already there so I don't have to wrap back around and I'm doing that by doing a quick triple jump here this is fine I'm gonna wait for the bomb to blink a little more Alright, unfortunately I didn't get a mini Mario um, up here, how I was supposed to, but that, it's still fine. I still saved two seconds. Does the world record have the save? Um, yeah, so the reason I save, uh, use a save state is to make sure most of the RNG patterns are the same. Because there, there are a couple uh, spots with RNG. I need to concentrate during this one. Yeah. 
Uh oh, I wasn't supposed to throw that, but that's fine. That's completely fine. Oh wow, I missed. That's fine. Bam. Huh. <laughs> Uh, Mario and DK just died at the same time. Nice. <laughs> so that's eight dollars, or not eight dollars? Eight uh, <laughs> eight gifted subs. Man, I'm I'm used to saying eight dollars. So I don't know why. All right. I'm gonna hold on to this. Walk to the left side. Hopefully grab this spawn. What? I don't... Okay. How am I... <laughs> how am I surviving right now? How did I live through all of that? <laughs> I should have died so many times. That was very interesting. <laughs> I should have died like four times there. <laughs> All right, this is world five, uh, world six. This is the hardest world. It introduces, ooh, lasers. Wow, dude. <laughs> but no, um, level's really tough. You'll see why. Um, this introduces key jumping. Um, it's like if you guys have seen Super Mario World runs, you you'll you'll know what key jumping is. It's a little different in this game, um, but it cheese it helps skip a lot of the levels. It's not easy to do uh, by any means. There are some very uh, very difficult spots where we have to key jump. Uh, first key jump we do is actually with this chai guy, believe it or not. <laughs> so not only can you key jump using keys, you can use enemies as well. To bring the shy guy up here and just pass through that hole. You know, Nintendo could have easily put another set of blocks over the red block right there to make that impossible, but they didn't. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> here we go. All right, there's gonna be another very um, difficult cycle here. Uh oh. Uh oh, I'm gonna restart. Um, that is nine. <laughs> that is nine deaths. I want to show. Uh, I want to show this off as best as I can. There we go. It's very easy to take fall damage there if you take too long. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick backflip. I'm going to do three spins and uh, do a handstand on myself, because that walking trash can is me. Um, throw the shy guy, jump on him. Very tight movement. And that's it. <clears throat> um, I have not tried a 100% run, but I do plan on trying in the future. 100% um, just doesn't um, what is it? <laughs> what am I trying to say? So this is another uh, pixel perfect jump. By turning left and right, you can move left a subpixel every time. There are in fact subpixels in this game. Um, yeah, but what, what was I saying? 100% um, doesn't really interest me as much as the other two categories. But yeah, by moving left and right, you move. Mario moves left a subpixel for whatever reason. Oh no, did they do something? <laughs> Alright. So I'm spinning a very specific amount of times. Seven on the first one, seven on the second one, and then four on the third pole, so I can prevent myself from getting hit by the lasers and by the electricity. <clears throat> Here we go. So 
So I'm going to do four spins here, do a triple jump here. Believe it or not, you can actually use that platform covering the lasers, which is really weird. Then I'm going to do a simple key jump here to make it across the spikes. Call me a cheater if you want. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Does this game have IL runs? Not on speedrun.com, but there is an IL community from what I've been told. I don't know how much of that community is uh, active nowadays. Uh, but by ducking and unducking right there, I was able to move right a pixel every time to move on to the second robot. I want to do another key jump there with the shy guy. It's very, very punishing. If you miss that key jump, you will die. You lose like 30 seconds. <laughs> uh, this is one of the coolest levels in the game. It's honestly one of my favorites. Um, we're gonna clip a key into the. Uh, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna clip this key into a wall by standing away from it. We're gonna do a key jump off of that and do two more. Uh, do one more key jump here. And hit the yellow switch. What the? <laughs> then hit this switch. Super precise. Can't stress that enough. That uh, clip into the wall is pixel perfect. Pixel precise. Alright, there's a very fast cycle I'm trying to make here to skip a an electricity cycle. Yeah, you just have to be pretty quick. Alright, if you're not holding up when you jump to that pole, you will jump straight into the spikes. <laughs> Which is not it's not great. So that, let, that that lets me skip that electricity right there. All right, and 6-6 six, six is another really amazing level. Uh, in 6-6, six, six, we're gonna fit Mario into a one-tile space. I know that sounds impossible right now, but I'm going to make it happen. You'll see, you guys will see. It's in the second half of the level. I don't know how the trick was found, but it's one of the coolest tricks in the game really awesome. That jump is easier than it looks. Looks like I'm gonna die there, but nope. This is Mario vs. Donkey Kong for the Game Boy Advance. It's a very, very awesome game. Uh, it's one of my favorites. So I'm gonna stand right here, positioning myself perfectly. And make it into, and I'm dead. <laughs> Hold on, let me try that again. It's a very, very difficult trick. Yikes, that is 10. <laughs> that is 10. I mean, 10 is a nice even number. It'd be a shame if it was 11, right? All right. Oh my god, I keep uh, I keep hitting right on the D-pad, which you're not supposed to do. It's a very very difficult trick. All right. <laughs> and to unduck and duck right there as fast as I can, I actually have to switch uh, to. Pressing the D-pad with my right hand. <laughs> it's really, really difficult. <laughs> it's definitely a run killer. Alright, so that's fine. We're gonna bring some mini Marios over here. Hopefully. <laughs> um, we want to kill at least one to drop the lag in this level. When there are too many Marios spawned on screen, the game will lag super hard. Oof. Okay, you guys need to move out of the way. 
It can block you from uh, jumping on the springs, really, Dom. Alright, so DK6. It's very... Very cool. Very cool fight. You can uh, manipulate... You can... Uh, so whenever you get hit by something, DK likes to roar uh, to taunt you. But you can use that to your advantage and prevent him from hitting the switch while he's roaring. So we're gonna do that. Also, you need to keep in mind that whenever the conveyor belt is faced a certain way, Donkey Kong will either uh, press the button right away before throwing a bomb, or he will throw the bomb right away. So by doing that right there, I manipulated DK to keep roaring. You have to pay very close attention to the bomb. And that's the fight right there. <clears throat> Alright, and DK6 is my favorite fight in the game. Um, basically, there's this weird mechanic in the game where if you're standing a certain distance away from uh, final DK, you can actually reuse the barrel that you hit him with. Normally it's supposed to disappear off screen every time, but if you stand 8 pixels away from Donkey Kong, you can reuse the barrel every time. Uh, first I have to make a very, very tight cycle right here. That saves 10 seconds. Let's the giant barrel despawn very quickly. And unfortunately, fortunately I got it, so... You will see the barrel despawn immediately. We also have to free three toads. I see the giant barrel is already coming down again. So next we're going to climb up to DK and we're going to stand eight pixels away from him while facing away from him and it'll let us reuse the barrel. It's very, very precise to set up. Also that jump is very difficult. This was found very recently. And that's time. 47.06. Very good run. Very, very decent run. So if you guys enjoyed, please uh, feel free to check out the Discord link on the speedrun.com page for this game. Um, we do have a Discord for this with all of, of the strats that we find. and. If you need any help or anything, um, you guys can definitely ask us in the Discord. We'll be very glad to help you. Also, if you enjoyed this run, feel free to check out my Twitch channel at uh, twitch.tv slash violentgamer underscore. I also have a YouTube, which is just Violent Gamer or any of the other things we talked about. But thank you guys so much. Um, really appreciate it. I had a lot of fun. Thank you so much, uh, Retrothon staff. For accepting this game and giving me a chance to show this off. It's a um, very, very nice uh, opportunity and this game is fantastic. I'm glad more people got to see it. So thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it.